I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Ten players fighting it out on a custom map. Up here at about 11 o'clock we have Team Elevenses. Down here at 4 or 5 o'clock we have Team Afternoon Tea. Two air positions, uh, two flank positions in the forward position for each team and the map is mirror rather than rotation. So in the rightmost air position for Team Elevens is, this is Mutual He is 1400 rated and UEF in brown. In the left hand air position, we have Psycho Ad, who's 1800 rated and Seraphim, and he's in electric pink. In the left hand flank position, Artifacts, who's 1400 rated, he's UEF in Cyan. In the forward position, Babel, who's 1500 rated, and Eon in grey. And last but not least, in the right hand flank position, we have Upass, 1100 rated, and Cybran in yellow. Now for Team Tea Time. In the right hand air position, we have Yoji, who is 1800 rated, and Eon in white. In the left hand air position, we have Maximus Triple X, who is 1500 rated, and Cybran in orange. In the left hand flank position, we have Knightly, who is 1700 rated, and Seraphim in red. Here in the forward position, this is Martine H333, who is 1200 rated and UEF in baby pink. And last but by no means least, none other than our old friend Zardos, who is 1000 rated and Cybran, and he is in dark green. Now the first thing to note about the map is... Holy cow, that is a lot of reclaim. 200,000, give or take, on the map. There are some bits here and here, and that is m more than enough reclaim for your average map. And there's so much up here in the top corner, nobody knows what to do with it all. And Zardos has got started on it very early. He started and almost finished before three minutes, a factory up here, edge built. He's gone for an air factory. I don't know if I like that play. I see what he's doing. He's making it his air factory, which will also be able to put out engineers here. But I would have put a land factory up here to defend against enemy drops coming in and trying to steal it. Early bomber coming out from Babel. No scout to support it yet. Has he got one queued up? He's only got inties there. I would have brought a scout directly after the bomber so that it could pick up things to hit, like this would be a lovely hit for that bomber. Meanwhile, Psycho has brought out a transport full of engineers and he's dropping it onto this plateau up here. I think that bomber might get those two NGs, you know. Boom! Two kills! Who needs scouts, says Babel. Psycho points out the vast heap of reclaim. Oh, oh, this would be brutal. Hover bomb! Look at that, that's painful. Five engineers in one hit, and this bomber is still going. It gets another two, that is nine kills for that bomber before an inti from Knightly finally takes it out. That's brutal. Meanwhile, we have more transports out. Artifacts have sent a transport, which he is sending towards this plateau here, and he's building and loading another as we speak. Yoji is also sending a transport, and it's going for this plateau here. I also like this. Air cover from both Mochilara and Psycho is focusing up here, 
and it's clearly intending to make sure that drops from Team Afternoon Tea don't land on these plateaus. However, the edge build from Zardos is churning out a decent number of NGs and they're getting stuff done. Not much land aggression yet. Knightley's got a transport, but he's not going to the plateaus with it. He's using it to drop his engineers over this southern plain. And that's good because this plain here, it is the only really contested area of the map. Up here, you've got the mexes coming up to here and up to here. So, sure, the reclaim's contested, but in terms of mexes, I'd say only these are really contested. And by dropping out to them early, Knightley will get a nice advantage. Martine here is starting on the drone, and that's surely got to be a bid for some of the reclaim. Send it out to the plateaus or send it around here. Snag some of those tasty rocks with a irritating little flying feather before any of the other team get there. Looks like we're lining up for our first land scuffle here as Babel approaches the tanks of Zardos. Zardos has more, but Babel's got one of those many bombers out. It gets shot down, but not before it drops a bomb and does some damage to Zardos units. And T1 bombers seem to be a running theme for Team 11s is here because we've got a bomber out from Mochilau looking set to stop Zardos getting as much as he can from this plateau. And to start with, Mochilau takes out the radar, and I reckon he's going for engineers next. Over here in this scuffle, really doubling down on the T1 bombers, and look at them pay off. A double bomber hit from Babel clears up a huge amount of Zardos spam. And Zardos comes forward with a little more, but there isn't really enough to stop this. He'll have to bring his com across in order to fight. Meanwhile, we've got an attempt to put up a anti-air turret here from Zardos but the bomb has taken out Indies around here and he's killing ever more. Will this turret go up? It's not actually being built at the moment because he killed the engineer that was building it. Nightly's expansion in the south looking great but let's come back to this bomber. We need to see a bomb right here, but another anti-air turret has been started. Why not finish this one? Another anti-air turret has been started down here. And the bomber is still alive. It comes in, it's definitely going to hit these boys. They restart building that, but immediately the bomb falls. And is it actually going to destroy that turret? Not quite. This engineer is taken out, preventing this turret. This is amazing denial from Mochila. Somehow, these engineers haven't managed to get a single turret up. And the fighter screen is preventing Yoji's fighters from stopping the bomber. At last, though, at last, the anti-air turret goes up. Mochila. Mochila, other M. Martine is in trouble. He is forced to cancel his T2 upgrade as yet more T1 bombers from Babel rain down. He's falling back towards anti-air tanks coming out of these um, these factories, so he should be fine, but being forced to cancel the T2 is going to hurt. And Knightley brings in some inties in support. And look at this! A heavily assisted T3 land upgrade at coming in at under 9 minutes, at least started at under 9 minutes, for artefacts. That's brutally early. And where Knightley is pumping out spam to cover this whole area, although artefacts has quite a little cluster here and Knightley will have to focus that, a sudden titan or two from artefacts would cause immense amounts of damage to Knightley, who is very much focused on the T1. Has he even got a T2 HQ? I do not think he has. So artifacts on his way to T3 before Knightley's even got T2. That's going to be hard. Meanwhile, Psycho has continued to drop and has landed over here. And he could just drive units down across here to attack Zardos from the ground. Zardos recognises that and puts up a T1 turret here. A point defence. 
but it really looks like Team Elevenses are going to town on this reclaim and getting the vast amount of it. Artifacts with NGs here and here. Only this plateau has really gone to Team Afternoon Tea thanks to Yoji dropping earlier. Let's have a quick overall eco check. Quite a hard mass store for artifacts. Actually, not that hard. He's covering it well with reclaim. Good balance. Commander under Psycho actually a bit too much, but then he hasn't got the um, power to spend it all because he's spending all his power on building his first T3 P gen. Yupa's looking okay. Same for Babel. And Mochilao needs more power. Maybe he's also going for T3. He's only going for T2 Pigeon, so Mochilao really needs more power. Yoji looking good. Martine, a bit more power, but looking good. Knightly overspending a bit. Zardos overflowing, so he'll need more bird power. And who haven't we seen? Maximus, I think. Maximus needs more power. But we don't have too long to wait here because Artifacts is actually looking under threat. We have a big push coming across from Martine and we have Knightly pushing up from the flank. Artifacts does have a T2 point defense up but this is more important. He's getting his Titans out and they are meeting the T1 span. However, I think we need to have a uh, pause for split screen because look over here. On the left, great positioning of Titans from Artifacts as these two to counter Knightley's attack, while well, these plus the rest of his T1 spam counter Martine's attack. So Artifacts doing great work there and producing more Titans. His comm is safe with a couple of T2 PDs and of course he can shoot his own shots. But over here, Zardos has two big problems and his spam which he sent all the way up here won't help much. One of them is all this wave of UPAS units coming through this little back passage, this crack, if you will. But the other is up here. We have a TML firing shots down, and they're going for the T3 HQ, which hasn't yet produced a combat unit. Boom! 300! The HQ survives that with 300 hit points remaining. He really needs a TMD because he could be about to lose all this investment in his HQ. Meanwhile, these tanks are taking out mexes belonging to Zardos, and his HQ goes down. Look at that, that's brutal. But so is this because over here, we have a bunch of Corsairs coming in from Maximus, who has taken out a T3 mex, and that must have hurt. They fly away, but I think there's more work they could get done. And here's another one. This one's only T2, but... Smash! We lose a T2 mech and a T3 mech. And meanwhile, that tactical missile launcher hasn't finished doing its work. It takes out a mech here, and there's a drop. We have Zooey's dropped here for Psycho, and they just need to push forward because there's only a T1 point defense. They can easily take that and wipe Zardus off his plateau to add insert to injury. Meanwhile, we might be about to lose only 250 hit points left. Yes, another T3 mechs goes down for artifacts. So oh, this is quite horrific for artifacts and he might be about to lose a fourth. He's putting up a bunch of T1 anti-airs and we have an ASF coming in from much of that, so that should save the day, but will it save the day in time to save this T3 Mex? The answer looks like yes, but even so, that was quite a brutal amount of damage inflicted on artifacts. Let's go back to single screen. So the first thing we're going to note here is that Titans have been swarmed down by spam here for poor old artifacts, but he's got more coming up to defend. Over here, Zardos is going for cloaking and holy cow he cannot afford that so I expect he'll have to cancel that sooner or later but he's got other worries on his plate because those 
Zoe's have dr come further forward and are taking stuff out, but as if that weren't enough, we've got yet more Zoe's dropping down here for Psycho, and on top of that, Loyalists. So where uh, Zardos had his HQ sniped out and now doesn't have the ability to build anything better than T1, he has put TMDs up, but a bit too late. He's now got to defend against T3 that Upas is sending through the back passage. Something that he could have taken steps to prevent, but remember, be vigilant. Only let your friends use your back passage. Psycho has sent Vurthul's to help Artifact's defence, but I don't think he needs them. We're beginning to see a bit of T2 from Nightly now, but this horde of Titans, plus these PDs, mean that I think that Artifact's will be more than able to fend for himself. Quick look at the Eco, though. Thanks to that smash of Artifact's mechs, Team 11's are now... Well, they were nearly 100 ahead, but look at that changing, because these Zooey's have come forward and are smashing through Yoji's stuff. These bombers will deal with them in the end, but they've done a decent amount of damage. You can see from that that many of those were at least T2. Still, in come the Loyalists, taking out Zardos Mexes. Zoe's contributing a bit of fire from above just for fun. I'm helping! I'm helping! Zardus is looking like he's in quite a lot of trouble. He's been forced to cancel the cloaking and he's bringing his comm back. He's lost all his starting mechs. He's lost this mech earlier. He's got very little left. He's got this T2 mech here and this one here and that's about it. He may be about to lose yet another one. And that's brought the Ecos back into line after that catastrophic loss that Maximus is under attack. I was going to say that artifact suffered, but Maximus is under attack from Vothos, well screened by Mutra and Psycho. I don't know if Maximus is getting out of this, because there isn't really any flak in here from Nightly to save him. And no, Maximus is just going to die to these Vothos with nothing to stop him, and as if that weren't enough, these Titans would finish the job. So, boom, Maximus is our first ejection at 17 minutes into the game. That said, all of this spam looks like it's going to be X spam when the Titans have finished with it, because this how many titans is that for artifacts? Just visible on the screen now, we have 21 titans, which is almost a monkey's worth of damage. And with their ability to kite, thanks to shields and high speed, they should be more than enough to clear up all this lower order spam. Though I do see at the first Othium out from Nightly joining the fun, and that means that artifacts may need to switch in a few Perseys. Over here, look at this, this is pretty great. There were TMDs, but there aren't now, thanks to a very carefully aimed snipe from Psycho, and he immediately he follows it up with a TML. Again hitting the HQ and again smashing Zardas back to T1. Poor guy can't catch a break. However, gunships from Yoji come in to clean up the stuff that Psycho has left on this plateau and he will manage it but I think he needs to worry about sending them up here there is flak up here though so he'll have to be careful and again desperate rebuild of TMD by Zardos ideally Upas would be pushing in down here through the back passage and is, this, is, it, is it still funny? I'm still going to use it and also the term back passage. Dearie me.
these titans are making real headway though. They're, not only have they cleaned up that spam, they're getting deep into Nightly's territory. And speaking of artifacts recovery, look at the Ecos. 100 mass protect lead for Team 11s is, which is pretty good. And on top of that, we've got our first experimental out, which is this Monkey Lord for U-Pass. And that looks like it too is going to try and fit down the back passage. Here it comes, stomping forward, trying to stick that great big laser in there. But, that's not the only offensive play we've got. We have a nuke finished for Yoji. And I haven't seen any SMD for Team 11s as yet. So, could be a bit of either. Meanwhile, looks like we've got work getting done by Mochilao's backpack TML, which he is firing. And he's got some decent kills with that. But he's taking care to fall back behind the spam and sniper bots from Babel. Zardos will have to be careful. Does he know about the monkey? Let's have a quick look. He doesn't. The monkey stealth is concealing it. And of course Zardos, without any... T3 power won't have an Omni and if there's an Omni for Yoji it's not close enough to pick that up so Zardos is in for a nasty surprise as that monkey advances. And it's getting into his T1 spam and this spam is going to be doomed. Zardos does have stealth so he might just be able to hide. He's coming forward to, the, the, to see what's happening, and then he sees it's a monkey, and he runs for it. The monkey looks like it will miss him, so Zardos might escape if his stealth protects him. Meanwhile, Night Tree's Othiums have driven Artifact Titans all the way back here, but that's a vast heap of Titans for Artifacts. That is... 50 titans 50 that's an awful lot of titans but in comes the monkey zardos is just out of sight but it's going to smash what little zardos has left look at that that is pretty brutal down go the factories he's got a t2 land hq here and he's trying to get it up to t3 but oh no i think that yet again Zardos is going to lose his HQ. He had an air HQ as well, that goes down. I say that, but out of all the things that that monkey had, should have shot, that HQ would be high on the list, and Zardos might be going to keep his HQ. He hasn't seen it. He's just, well, he has seen it, but he hasn't registered it. He's just missed the HQ. Now, it looks like we're getting T1 bomber defense from Team Afternoon T. And recently, we have seen a lot more T1 bomber defense against experimenters. And that's quite a lot, so it will get work done. And there's a decent horde of ASFs down here in case Team 11s is choose to respond. But Yoji launches the nuke and where's it going? It's going for artifacts. Oof. Does artifacts realize? These guys are heading to what? No, they're grouping up with those. They're not heading towards the nuke. I don't know if he knows where it's going. But Mochilao just walks into a bunch of spam and dies. Why? What was he doing? Law, says Mochilao. But let's go and split screen because we need to watch these two things. On the right, there are strats on the monkey, but on the left... Boom. Down goes the base, but down goes the monkey. 
a win for each side, but I think I'd rather be getting Yoji's win than... Wait, what am I talking about? That's a win or for Team Afternoon Tea. Nice. Okay, back to single screen. But while the monkey was a nice kill, it wasn't alone, and behind it there were bricks, and now Zardos has been seen, and he is looking in quite a lot of danger. I don't think Zardos is going to get out of this one. He's into the red. 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. Boom. Zardos goes out at 25 minutes, our third kill this game. Psycho is massing an awful lot of Nothers up here. What are they going to do? Babel is back on the T1 bomber bandwagon and he is bombing these Ophiums with them. And I mean, he's getting work done. That's a good trade because there isn't any flak in there to defend them. Let's have an eco check while we're at it. Huge power store, mass overflow. He'll need to start spending that. Not enough power, mass overflow. So it seems like there's a theme. Not enough power, mass overflow, and that would be because of the nuke. I bet they were relying quite a lot on artifacts. And it looks like the, the team at afternoon tea time are all pretty well balanced. Bit of an overspend from Nightly, but no power trouble, not too much mass trouble. Pretty good. But Team Elevenses are 200 per tick ahead because of all this damage that's been done to Zardos. And these bricks have come on and they are just smashing up is there anything? Yes, there is. There are harbies to stop them and bombers. I don't think the harbies would be enough to stop that many bricks, but with these bombers, I think they will be. And again, Artifact has that huge titan force, and this time he's supporting it with a Ravager creep. I would be building Perseus now that I see this many Othiums. I would be building Perseus as rowers, or perhaps even instead of titans, if I were Artifacts. But not only have we got that nuke going one way, I see T3 Arty going up the other way from U Pass. And did I also. Yes. Nukes from Psycho as well, so everybody's keen to get some long-range weaponry up and running. And those Nothers are repositioning, Strategic looks like. But not before we get a second nuke out from Yoji. Where's it going? Meanwhile, these titans might be out of position because Knightly has a chicken and a lot of Othiums and it's going in here through the gap between Artifacts and Babel and these Ravagers can probably defend here but these titans need to come across here to try and stop the chicken. Looks like the nuke might be going for Babel's base. Nice big Eon base full of nice big Eon things. Is it about to explode? Boom! Down it goes in nuclear fire. So th another base nuked out, the chicken charge again, but somehow Team Elevens is, is still ahead on Eco. Oh, but what's this I see? I see two attacks going at once, so let's prepare a get yet again for some split screen. On the left, strats are coming for Artifacts Com. 
but there's a big air response from Psycho. The struts take down the shield, they hurt the comb, but they're going to be slain before another pass is able to take place. And meanwhile, this chicken is causing problems in Babel's old base. Martin, however, he may have run just a little too slowly, and the Mega targets him. He's into the yellow. Is he going to escape in time? He is not. The next hit, boom. Martin goes down at 28 minutes, but Artifact survives. However, there's a lot more for Team 11 just to worry about than Artifacts being stratted. Let's go back to single screen. This chicken is now deep, deep into Team 11's territory, so deep that he may be more th thinking of a second breakfast. And what have they got to stop it? There's a chicken being built here, but it's nowhere near finished, and this chicken could be getting a huge heap of damage. Meanwhile, that's a nuke we can see on the minimap out from Yoji. Do we know where it's going? That looks like it's heading... Is he trying to get Artifacts Com? And if it is, it's going to succeed because Artifacts Com isn't running. But here comes the chicken. Babel's Com is dangerously nearby. There's a lot of PD here, but there's a lot of Othiums with the chicken. A few Titans come in from Artifacts. But this chicken is about to finish for Psycho, and that could make all the difference. However, Artifacts didn't run. Boom! Down goes Artifacts in nuclear fire at almost 30 minutes on the dot. Back to that chicken fight though. Sorry Artifacts, you're not super important when it comes to this fight. And we might be about to lose another com as the chicken opens fire of Babel but then it's distracted by Psycho's chicken. It smashed its way through all this PD but it's lost a little bit of health. This looks like it might be a tie, and I'm so. And Babel's coming back in. Is he going to try and overcharge it? That's. And suddenly, Cycle's Chicken is looking in a lot of trouble. But the shield blocks fire on it for just a moment, and that might make all the difference. An overcharge from Babel smashes Knightley's Chicken down into the red. Cycle's Chicken dies, and Babel backs away. The point defense fires, and suddenly there's only a boom. The Iron Storm kill Babel. Are you sure you want to stand there? But the Iron Storm from Cycle's Chicken has killed Knightley's Chicken, and he's defended just. And meanwhile, those Titans, which Cycle has now inherited from Artifacts, are pushing forward, ready to stop the next chicken, which Knightley is bringing in. And there are Ravagers here, and enough Ravagers will stop a chicken. So I'm less worried for Psycho about this push than I am about the last one. On the other side, Yoji's land army, which he's been building from the stuff he inherited from Zardos and Martine, has bottled Yupas back into the crack. Strategic launch detected. And it is now Psycho who gets his nuke out. Where's that going? That looks like it's heading there. It's heading for this little base here, which is pretty good because there's an SMD back here. It's not loaded, but Psycho doesn't know that. And he will take out all the T3 mexes in what used to be, I think that was Martine's starting base. So that is a pretty good shot. However, this chicken is just dodging around the Ravagers and may need a bit of a counter. Ecos are again level after all the huge amounts of destruction inflicted on both sides. Kaboom! Down goes Martine's old base. Meanwhile, remember the arty we mentioned from Yupas? It's up, it's firing, and it's actually doing a bit of damage because the air grid is not sufficiently shielded for Yoji and that was quite a good hit. A couple more like that and Yoji might lose his air grid. His HQ is just about under shield coverage maybe. Ooh, that was painful. So this is excellent arty work from Yupas.
Nightly's checking continues to advance, but it's getting under fire from a lot of gunships, and these are now broadswords, not just Vothos. There is flak in there. Meanwhile, a huge air fight goes down, but despite losing the majority of his air grid, it looks like Yoji's going to win it. Yeah, look at that. Yoji absolutely cleans up the air with the assistance of a decent amount of flak actually in here from Knightley. And Knightley's got another chicken charging into the back of the base for Psycho and Babel. Babel is right here trying to rebuild and may just die if the chicken continues on this path. But we do have another chicken finished from Psycho and that might make all the difference. Look at this, that arty damage has crushed almost everything. He's only got he's only got the HQ that left and he may not have that for long. Strategic launch detected. But he's still got the nuke snug away in this little corner and it launches. And the air HQ goes down. Yoji can no longer produce T3 air, but he's got one from Maxima, so he can produce Cyber and T3 air over here. Hasn't got a good air grid, though. Meanwhile, Knightley has seen this counter chicken coming up from Psycho, and he's just swept his entire army right, where there's nothing to defend. There's undefended eco here, and he's just going to smash through it. That's brutal, and of course, here comes the nuke. Of course, that chicken is no faster than this army. In fact, it's slower than everything but the chicken. And there's an anti-nuke. Psycho counters the nuke, and again, we're back to even Stevens and Eco, but this could be about to change matters. And Yupas is building the teleporter like the Cybern that he is. I would be sending this chicken to stop the arty, send it here, then back here. But instead it's focusing on the eco and it may be about to take out Babel's com. Babel has been seen by the chicken, the chicken's closing in on him. Boom! Babel goes down at 35 minutes, leaving it a 2v2 with Psycho and Yupas for Team Elevenses and Yoji and Knightley for Team Afternoon Tea. And I see that Yoji has just finished Arty of his own with which to return fire on the Arty that Yupas has been lobbing in his direction. Looks like we've got a reclaim going down. Yupas is just throwing everything into that teleporter and another starting base, this time the one that had belonged to Muchalau, is being wrecked by the army from Knightley. There's been an attempt to start a Mavor here, where that hasn't got very far. Still, a decent amount of resource sunk into it to get it up to nearly 20%. That's an awful lot of mass that Psycho's about to have wasted for him by this chicken walking in. He's got chickens here and here, and they would be able to take this army if they moved in, but they're not and that Mavor is destroyed. Ravages are being used to try and save the air grid, but that feels like it might be too late. And look at the eco difference in favour of Team Afternoon T now. Suddenly they're 500 ahead, as this army has just smashed through everything. A ping goes down to say, remember this mech's back here, that's T3. Like one Othium could go and deal with it. And the laser is started, and it's finished. Are we seeing a telly? Well, he's not immediately charging it. We'll check back in a moment, because this, I think, is rather more important. Over here, we do actually have the next chicken being stopped by Yupan, who has a huge horde of bricks plus a monkey lord, and if the monkey or the bricks focus the chicken... Okay, I take that back. The chicken takes out the monkey, and it's all down to the bricks. Still, there may be enough to take it out. We'll check back in a moment. Over here, chickens from Psycho are finally getting shots landed on the chicken from Knightley.
but the amount of damage he's inflicted is massive. And there's the nuke here. Will he be able to take out Psycho's nuke? One more shot and the answer is yes. Boom, down goes the nuke. So this has been horrific for Psycho. I think he's eventually... Yes, he's now got three chickens coming in. He'll eventually be able to take that out. But at what cost, my dudes? At what cost? And Yoji's arty has smashed that of Yupas. And it's now targeting Yupas' main base. He'll have to use that telemaser soon if he wants to get anything done, because this is going to be brutal. Boom! His T3 power is going up, and without that, he's going to have trouble telemasering. And he's still not using it. Do they... I mean, this. This would be a perfect target. Knightly standing in the, in the corner with only 13,000 hit points and no gun upgrade. Well, he's starting nano now, but that wouldn't be enough to save him if Yupas got the telly off. But he hasn't. Martin warns that a telly snipes incoming because he's, he's scouted this and seen what's happened. Another chicken fight going down. And with these chickens coming in, I think this one too goes Psycho's way. Who now has four chickens in this area to knight these two. Chicken down for Psycho, but this one is only a couple of shots away from death, and boom, chicken down for Nightly. And the positioning of the Ion Storms is definitely going to favour Psycho if he stays back a little bit. Oh, and it looks like we're just in time to see where's that going. Well, he is going straight for Nightly. Another nuke out from Yoji. Where's that heading? That looks like it's heading for Yupas base. He's about to teleport out. Is he going to make it? He's building a shield to protect him as he does. But the RT rains down and the explosion takes him out a second before he teleports. And... Knightley is safe because Yupas, who was about to tell you snipe him, has died to the arty, and as if that weren't enough, the nuke is following up to add insert to injury, and what was Yupas's base is going to be smashed as the nuke lands upon it, and it feels like the writing is on the wall. Sure, there were still chickens in defence, but they're not stopping the chicken... Okay, a chicken on one energy signature, and that one's going to be propped by its own friend's death ball. And so Psycho 2 is going for the teleporter. As a Seraphim, what's he going to build with it? Gun and double gun, maybe? We're going to have to find out. Knightly's forces come charging in, and that's a chicken plus stuff versus a chicken, and I know how my money's on. This chicken kills this one over here, so there's enough, and he's going for the splash. He's got the... And he starts his teleport. Will he survive long enough? Yes, because this army's coming back and this is dead. So he is actually going to teleport out and he may be able to snipe, but will he be able to snipe both? Lot of tele defense for Yoji and his nuke. There is some reclaim on the top of the map, says Martine, and he's not wrong. The teleport is spotted. And he beams in. Knightley tries to run away. But he's not going to get out of this one. But I see the shadows of gunships. Boom! Knightley explodes. But we have multiple whalers coming in. We have many, many T1 bombers coming in. Psycho is trying to teleport out, but he's losing hits just too fast. He's not going to make it. Kaboom! Psycho dies and Team Afternoon T win the game at 42 minutes. Oh, do you think that Team 11s could have won with the epic reclaim advantage they had from all those plateaus? 
reclaim and a position advantage too, as we saw with the tactical missile launcher with which Psycho did so much damage to Zardos. Do you think Artifacts could have done more with his early Titans? He had a huge mass of them, and he didn't really get anything done with them until it was too late, and Knightley had those Othiums coming out. Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.